Speed farming pinpoint gear, 100% run, stage 30. Let's do it. What's going on guys, Blazing here. Welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me on another Raid Shadow Legends video. All right, so today is actually gonna be a pretty quick video because the dungeon we're farming is going to be done in less than 10 seconds. And yes, we are talking about the new dungeon event. Now, we are going to have what looks like a um, Odin's trial, right? So we, we have to farm the new event. Now, I don't know what the rewards for this are going to be, but I do hope that they're going to be better than some of the other ones. Looking at the Fire Knight one, I'm pretty good with everything up until the last reward here. I feel like this should be something a little bit better. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments down below. But with that said, we're going to showcase a team here that is a 100% success rate. And I'm sure by now you've all guessed it. We are using enemy max HP hitters. So the thing with this dungeon is going to be that we need to make sure that we get the decreased defense on the boss every single time to make sure that Odin takes the max amount of damage. So the speed requirement for this also is pretty high. It's almost at 260 for the uh, NPCs and then Odin himself is at almost 280. So we need to go faster than him. Now, substitutions for Deacon, you could put in Lysandra. If he misses his decreased defense, it's not a problem. That's why we brought in Ghostborn. Ghostborn is a guaranteed decreased defense, right, on the A3 and does, it's gonna make sure that we, no matter what, have a success rate of 100%. We basically just need a turn meter manipulator and the speed for the lead, and that's it. Now I've tried a Chrysium, and I've also tried Marius. They don't work as well. You could go with a, a refresh to try to get yourself the double newts, but it's not as consistent, right? So let's go ahead. We'll run this on super runs. But you guys will see here, we get the decrease. We totally skip the decrease defense here, right? We get the turn meter manipulation. That's pretty much what we care about. Bringing the ads turn meter down and ours up. One, two, three. And we get Soul Reap comes in, takes care of it. Now we do have a three star Soul Reap on all of them. It's gonna be his best one. So if you have that, it's gonna work out pretty well for you. Let's do it one more time here. They resisted everything. Again, it's just being able to go before the ads, right? We're not putting up a lot of buffs. So we don't really have to worry about the Valkyrie. There we go. Again, perfect, right? You could swap the Deacon for Lysandra, but it really doesn't matter. As long as you're able, I wouldn't use an Arbiter uh, just because if you build some accuracy into Deacon to be able to decrease the adds turn meter, because that Valkyrie is going to mess up with your turn meter. You definitely want to make sure that you're covered on that basis. One more time, just to show you guys that it's not a flop. Now, if you had your newts at like 280 speed, you could definitely do this without the deacon. And you could just run yourself the triple nuts and go with the ghost mourn. Now, one of the things that I really do want to actually show you guys is I want to replace one of the G nuts and we're going to put in Marius, right? Because I want to show you exactly why he doesn't work out as well. Let's go ahead. We'll get some some of the times the damage he puts out isn't enough so we get the decrease defense or we get the turn meter manipulation right okay so ghostborn will go this is what happens he gets provoked <laughs> he gets provoked a lot of the times and the run kind of screws you right so that's why you really can't bring him in some of the times it'll work out where he can go in and it will basically be no problem. But the provoke, him having it really screws us up. So could you put in a Krizia? Well, let's go ahead. I'll show you guys. And I'm wasting energy here just so you guys can see that these other champions can work, but or should be working, but don't really, right? So let's go with a Krizia next. Now I've got a six star crushing rend on mine. So the only problem with her is going to be the fact that she doesn't have soul reap on. You got ghostborn. Okay. 
Gina goes one, two, three. Now we need, we've got 30% of the damage done there. One, two, three. So we need at least another 30%. So we'll go with the A2 or the A3. And it's not enough. It's not enough, right? So especially if you don't have a Soul Reap on her, she definitely has to go faster or before the other two G-Nuts. Luckily, we do have ours in a Relentless set and we proc'd it and it worked out well. Now, for the AI setup, it's pretty simple and easy. Deacon opens up with the A3, then the A2. Ghostborn, strictly A3. If you have somebody else that can guarantee you a decreased defense, then use that. I know Lydia is one of the more common ones that people use. Here's the thing with that. Lydia has a 3% chance to miss on the weekend and the decreased defense. And the check is for each one of them. So there is more of a fail rate with that run, right? And then all we care about the three G-Nuts is making sure that they use their A3. Let's talk builds. First of all, my Deacon, he's basically built just for speed, right? We actually, I think we don't even have enough accuracy on him. We kind of need to be closer to like 400, but we just have him built in regular sets, right? It's again, it was just about the speed and the accuracy. So we've got him built with 307 speed. So going faster than everybody else using his speed lead, of course, and 381 accuracy. We don't care about anything else. No one else is taking a turn. Skills wise, honestly, just book if you have the A, uh two book you don't really need the a3 but if you have the a2 book it works out well if not it's fine we just care about decreasing their turn meter and increasing ours right he's not going to be our decreased defense champion cruelty is the blessing that we did take for him and as for masteries you don't really need him but i do have what we used for uh some of the other content in the game right so we've got war master methodical Bring it down along with single out we've got keen strike and deadly precision master hexer sniper we did get evil eye along with lord of steel we do have arcane celerity because he does bring some debuffs we took swarm smiter along with exalted and death we also did take charge focus and pinpoint accuracy next up is actually the star that makes this all come together which is ghostborn because ghostborn has that guaranteed decreased defense on the a3 so with him, we currently have him built with a two-piece Slayer and a Swift Perry set. For him, he's basically built out full damage because I use him for some channels, right? So looking at the stats, what do we got him? Well, we got him with about 5k attack, right? A little bit over. 293 speed, 102 crit rate, 343 crit damage. He's not going to do a lot of damage. It just helps get that soul reap 100%, right? We don't care about accuracy or resistance but if you want to you can build up to like 350 400 accuracy skills wise we do have a fully booked we only really care about the a3 right we want it to be a hundred percent cruelty is a blessing that we did take for him as the a3 is aoe hit it makes the most sense masteries wise now the masteries may not make sense but we did use them for our stage 25 fire night team so we did go ahead and we took Helm Smasher, we did take Kill Streak along with Methodical, Bring It Down, we did take Cycle of Violence, we also did take Ruthless Ambush along with Single Out, we did take Keen Strike, Shield Breaker, and we did take Deadly Precision. As for the support tree, we have Master Hexer, Lore of Steel, Swarm Smiter, Charge Focus, and we have Pinpoint Accuracy. Next up is the G-Nuts. Now for them, the builds are pretty much all the same. Two of them are actually built in Affinity Breaker, and perception or one is built in an affinity breaker and perception the other one is built in an affinity breaker merciless and slayer piece just to be able to get that extra boost right um and then the third one is actually built in uh lethal perception and a piece of feral feral is actually coming in very clutch right now guys that 40 accuracy on a ring is huge right but the stats for them are pretty much all the same so we're going to go through with the first one, which is 257 speed, right? You need to try to get as close to 260 as possible. If you're not using an aura, he has to be above 261 for the boss to not take a turn. 100% crit rate, 315% crit damage, and 419 accuracy. This build is still going to work everywhere else you use, right? Whether you use him in Fire Knight, Shogun, 
Sand Devil, it's still going to be the same. As for the skills, we do have him fully booked. Soul Reap is his best blessing, and that's what we leave it at, right? We don't change it. Masteries wise, we did come down. We took Giant Slayer. We did take Kill Streak along with Bring It Down. We did also take Cycle of Violence, Life Drinker, and Single Out. We did take Keen Strike along with Heart of Glory, and we did take Deadly Precision on the support tree. I'm a big fan of Cycle of Magic on him, trying to get that A3 back as much as possible between that and Cycle of Violence is pretty big. Uh, Swarm Smiter along with Charge Focus and Pinpoint Accuracy. So there it is, guys. Stage 30, 100%, done in 10 seconds, speed farming it. If you really want the gear, it's there. I don't know what to say. Unfortunately, it is a triple G Knight team. I will start looking at some other teams that are going to be as fast not using G-Nuts, maybe using one or two that have a little more of accessible champions. But, Claren, if you're watching, let's get a guaranteed Ghostborn for, I don't know, 100 Ancients. I'm happy with that. I think a lot of the players would be happy with that. Maybe a, a guaranteed G-Nut for, I don't know. Well, I'm going to go with 50. I know the comments down below are going to be crazy, guys. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you got some time, make sure to come by on Sunday, 2 p.m. EST, and hang out with us for the Knights of Teleria podcast where we talk everything Raid Shadow Legends. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. It's definitely good. There's definitely a lot of bad. And boy, oh boy, do we have a lot of ugly sometimes. As always, guys, much love, much appreciation. Be safe, be well, be good to each other, and I'll catch you guys next time.